we've got the Big Ten tournament. We're not going to count our chickens before they hatch here. But mm -hmm. looking ahead past mm -hmm. the Big Ten tournament, it is a almost certainty that Nebraska has clinched a berth to the NCAA tournament. Just looking at the latest bracketology outlook following Sunday's win at Michigan, Nebraska was in 108 of 108 projected brackets, according to Bracket Matrix. Seems pretty safe. TeamRankings.com gives, gives Nebraska a 99% chance of making the tournament. T Rankatology gives Nebraska a 99.7% chance of making the field and an 88.7% chance at a at-large bid. So it's basically a formality at mm -hmm. this point. It's, I don't think it's the conversation is where they're in. It's a matter of how high of a seed they could potentially get. And right now, going mm -hmm. into Minneapolis, Nebraska is generally anywhere from a 9 to a 10 by most of the major bracketologists. You know, Joe Lenardi in ESPN has him as a 9 playing in Memphis. Jerry Palm, CBS, has him as a 10 playing Florida and Memphis. Uh, Andy Katz, I think his most recent bracket, had them as a nine seed playing Texas in Salt Lake City. And then Mike DeCorsi of Fox Sports has them as a 10 playing St. Mary's in Omaha, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Could happen. Could easily happen. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of conversation, too, about whether the selection committee would try to avoid those mm -hmm. types of placings. But really, that only applies to the the top seeds. Like, they don't want Kansas playing in Kansas City or, right. you know, those, those types of things. But when it comes to your 8, 9, 10, 11 seeds, they actually prefer it because they know it's going to sell more tickets. So mm -hmm. there's a very, very good, good chance, chance yeah. that Nebraska could be placed in Omaha. And I've seen some brackets where um, – want to say it was maybe to Corsi's bracket where the next the second round potential matchup with Iowa State in Omaha the Fred Hoiberg reunion game against his alma mater it'd be the hard it'd be Omaha. one of the hardest tickets to get anywhere can you imagine yeah Iowa State fans coming over to bracket oh yeah I mean, come on and it'd be hot in there it'd be Oof. that would be loud and hot so there's a lot of you know momentum for Nebraska too like people want them to go to Omaha I mean I I get it like that would be essentially like playing in Sioux Falls <laughs> with the amount of fan support they're going to have there. So that's definitely something to watch, not just what seed Nebraska gets, but what, what the location could be. Well, <clears throat> this is, this is, we just got to really enjoy this. Nebraska fans have to you know. It's been I 10 mean, years since we've had these conversations in now legitimately you have reason to look at the field look at who's hot right now who's not who's trying to get in the who's trying to get in the tournament who could fall out mm -hmm. you have a reason to look at it now it's really this is fun i and you know i don't want to get ahead of ourselves too much but a lot of these guys from nebraska are back this is something we might be able to get used to yeah i haven't i mean i just started lo looking at the national scene really today and where Nebraska might fit. And the one thing you'd say about the national picture is it's there's no dominant team, number one. No, nope. there's not. That was the case this year. Yeah. Purdue's your potential number one overall seed. Nebraska whipped them. Right now, <laughs> today, Purdue would be the number one overall. Yep. UConn would be two. Mm -hmm. uh, three would be Houston. And then four, Tennessee, probably. And you might, somebody else might be able to get, who, who else would it be? Tennessee or Tennessee's not for sure. The first yeah, right now they're in that conversation. Then you're looking at Arizona. Yes, Arizona. Marquette, okay. Um, North I, Carolina, yeah. Iowa State. There you go. There you go. The first three you can, or you can bank on Houston being a one, Purdue being a one, UConn, and UConn being a one. But I wouldn't say any of those teams are dominant. UConn, I watched Creighton dismantle mm -hmm. UConn in Omaha. Mm -hmm. We we watched Nebraska dismantle, pretty much dis, dismantle Purdue and Lincoln. Um, Houston, I haven't seen. I mean, Good. I just uh, now, tough. but I will tell you, I'll tell you what Houston did in their first year in the Big Twelve. They won it. Okay, they won the Big Twelve in their first year. And Kansas, meanwhile, wasn't Kansas has had kind of a down year. For their standards, for sure. Yeah, so there you go. There could be your number one seeds right there, and then from there, there's a lot of interesting. There's a lot of interesting things going on out there. So to Joe Lenardi's latest bracket, he's the one that has Nebraska as a nine seed playing St. Mary's in the eight nine game in Memphis. Guess who the the one seed in that bracket is? That Nebraska would play in UConn. the second round. Houston. Oh, <laughs> Houston. I'm sorry. Yeah, Houston. Yeah, yeah. So 
tough draw there. Real tough. That's kind of like th that brings up the discussion of would Nebraska rather be a 10 a seed? 10, yeah. Because then you avoid that second round matchup likely against the number one overall seeds. I mean, there's something to be said for that. But then, you know, you got to wonder too, like if they're the 10, what's the likelihood of them getting placed in Omaha? So there's a lot of variables involved there. I just say get as high of a seed and just play the, play the hand you're dealt. Well, and like Fred said, I, I mean, I read your story from the Michigan game that there's not a lot, there's not pressure on Nebraska right now. They're, per, they're pretty much in, they're going to many stress free weekends. Yeah, it's pretty saying. stress free. I think they can lose. I mean, not that they want to lose or any, I don't think they will lose in the first, in that first game in Minneapolis, but if they do, it's not, it's not something that would jeopardize their chances. No. No, they're they're in a good situation. They've earned it, and and I'm and I and I think closing against Michigan was big. It was uh, closing with that win got them to three seed, and it did take some pressure off. It did so because that if you lose that Michigan game, then all of a sudden that door remains cracked open. Cracked. Of well, what if they go into Selection Sunday having lost three of their last four games, including right. at Michigan, right. the worst Michigan team in decades? Right, you know, and so. That conversation now is closed. I, I agree with you. I don't think anything that happens in Minneapolis is going to dictate no. Nebraska's NCAA tournament no, fate. All it can do is improve their seat right. at this point. So um, it's, fun. it's fun. Yeah, Rob, I, you've earned this. And we're we're going to go out. So Sipple yeah. and I are going to head up to Minneapolis to cover the Big Ten tournaments. Mm -hmm. We'll be up there for as long as Nebraska's up there. And then mm -hmm. after that, uh, once Selection Sunday is here, we know our brackets will be on the road. Could be Brooklyn, could be Memphis, Memphis could be Omaha, Salt could be Salt Lake City. Yeah, God, here's Spokane. I mean, Spokane. It's pretty wide range of places where you could go. It I'm is. saying, I'm pushing for Memphis. Yeah, you're big on Memphis. Yeah, it's the barbecue in Beale Street. Um, I've never been to Memphis. Oh, I've never walked. I will show you around. 